Arkansas, often referred to as the Opium King of the Golden Triangle, is one of the most notorious figures in the global drug trade. Born into a tumultuous era in the borderlands of Myanmar, his life story is one of warfare, cunning, and dominance in the illegal narcotics business. Through a combination of military power, strategic alliances, and an astute understanding of geopolitics, Kun Sa built an empire that supplied vast amounts of heroin to the world, particularly the United States. This article explores Kun Sa's journey from his early days to his rise as one of the most feared drug lords of Southeast Asia, covering his family background, early crimes, and eventual dominance over the Golden Triangle. Kun Sa was born on February 17, 1934 in Loi Ma, a village in the Shan state of Myanmar. From an early age, Kun Sa became familiar with the opium trade. The cultivation of opium poppies was widespread in the Shan state, and it was seen as one of the few lucrative sources of income for impoverished farmers. The region was at the center of the Golden Triangle, a region where Myanmar, Thailand, and Laos meet, and was a key area for opium production. Opium became a way of life for the local people, and for Kun Sa, it would become the foundation of his empire. In the 1950s, Myanmar's post-independence government was struggling to maintain control over its outlying regions, particularly in the Shan state. Kun Sa allied himself with local Shan militias, who were fighting for greater autonomy from the Burmese central government. It was during this period that Kun Sa learned the fundamentals of guerrilla warfare and established himself as a rising leader within the Shan community. Kun Sa's first major criminal activity occurred in 1963 when he kidnapped two Chinese nationalist officers who were involved in drug smuggling in the Shan state. The officers were part of the Kuomintang, KMT, a Chinese nationalist faction that had fled to Myanmar after the communist takeover of China in 1949. The KMT had taken refuge in the borderlands of Myanmar, where they were involved in the opium trade to fund their military activities. Kun Sa's kidnapping of these officers was both a strategic move and an introduction to the complexities of the drug trade. By the late 1960s, Kun Sa had transitioned from a local militia leader to a significant player in the burgeoning opium trade in the Golden Triangle. His rise to power was not an isolated event, but was closely tied to the political and economic conditions of the region. During this time, the demand for heroin, particularly in the United States, was skyrocketing. The Vietnam War had created a growing number of heroin users among American soldiers stationed in Southeast Asia, and the U.S. was rapidly becoming the world's largest market for the drug. Kun Sa's methodical approach to the drug trade was both ruthless and highly effective. He controlled every aspect of the heroin production process, from the cultivation of opium poppies to the transportation of the final product to global markets. His organization was hierarchical, with Kun Sa at the top as the undisputed leader, followed by his trusted commanders who oversaw various aspects of the operation. Once the opium was harvested, it was transported to refineries in the Golden Triangle, where it was processed into heroin. Kun Sa's refineries were among the most sophisticated in the region, producing high-quality heroin that was highly sought after in international markets. The final product was then smuggled out of the Golden Triangle through a network of land routes, often using bribery and intimidation to ensure the cooperation of local authorities. From there, the heroin was transported to Bangkok. Kun Sa's network was incredibly efficient, capable of moving thousands of tons of heroin each year, and he was known for his ability to deliver large quantities of the drug on time without interference from law enforcement. Kun Sa's rise to power came at a tremendous cost, both in terms of human lives and regional stability. His dominance over the drug trade in the Golden Triangle was maintained through a combination of bribery, military force, and sheer brutality. His soldiers were responsible for countless acts of violence, including massacres of rival drug lord supporters, executions of disloyal farmers. Kun Sa was the massacre of a rival drug lord supporters in the mid-1970s. After a failed negotiation over control of opium-producing territories, Kun Sa ordered his forces to attack the rival stronghold. The result was a bloody battle that left dozens of people dead and sent a clear message to others who might challenge Kun Sa's authority. 
While the violence in the Golden Triangle was horrific, the effects of Kunsa's heroin trade were felt around the world. As his heroin flooded into the United States and Europe, addiction rates soared, leading to untold suffering for the victims of heroin abuse and their families. The heroin epidemic of the 1970s and 1980s, particularly in the United States, was fueled in part by the vast quantities of heroin supplied by Kunsa's empire. Thousands of lives were lost to overdoses, and many more were ruined by the addiction that tore through communities. Kun Sa's brutality extended beyond his rivals and the farmers under his control. His organization was known for using extreme violence to enforce its dominance. Human rights abuses were rampant, with reports of torture, executions, and forced labor emerging from the areas under Kun Sa's control. Throughout his reign as a drug lord, Kun Sa was able to use the rugged terrain of the Shan State and the Golden Triangle to his advantage. The mountainous, heavily forested landscape provided natural cover for his operations and made it difficult for government forces to track his movements. Kun Sa built a network of fortified bases and hideouts deep within the mountains where his soldiers could defend against government raids and rival attacks, bribery and political alliances. In addition to his military strategies, Kun Sa maintained his freedom through a well-developed system of bribery and corruption. Government officials, border guards, and police officers were frequently paid off to turn a blind eye to his activities. In some cases, Kun Sa's influence extended so far that he effectively controlled entire towns and regions, where local authorities were either complicit in his operations or too afraid to challenge him. For example, during the 1970s and 1980s, Kun Sa was able to avoid capture by forming an alliance with the Thai government, which saw him as a valuable asset in their own struggle against communist insurgencies in the region. The Thai military provided Kun Sa with weapons and supplies in exchange for his assistance in fighting communist forces. This relationship allowed Kun Sa to operate with relative impunity for years, as Thai authorities were unwilling to disrupt his heroin trade as long as it served their strategic interests. One of the most famous interviews with Kun Sa was conducted in the 1980s by Australian journalist Stephen Rice. During the interview, Kun Sa portrayed himself as a benevolent figure who was working to improve the lives of the Shan people. He claimed that his involvement in the drug trade was a necessary evil, driven by the poverty of the region and the need to finance the fight for independence. Kun Sa denied responsibility for the global heroin epidemic, blaming Western countries for their demand for the drug rather than his supply of it. Kun Sa's media savvy allowed him to maintain a certain level of public support, even as international pressure mounted against him. His interviews often painted him as a victim of geopolitical forces beyond his control, a narrative that resonated with those who saw the Burmese government as an oppressive force. However, to those affected by the heroin trade, particularly in the United States, Kun Sa remained a villain responsible for countless deaths and the destruction of communities. In January 1996, after decades of evading law enforcement and amassing a fortune from the heroin trade, Kun Sa made a surprising move. He surrendered to the Burmese government.